it came from someone who's watching. I don't know if it's someone who watches live all the time. I think it might be someone who catches the recording, but that's where our topic came from for this month. And um, I am also ignorant and confused about this topic. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, uh, we are gonna be talking about cryptocurrency today. So hopefully um, Andrew will be able to download some information on us about cryptocurrency. So, uh, I mean, there, so, I mean, there's so many places to start, I think, when, especially like when it comes to like cryptocurrency. So if anyone has any specific questions, jump in. I, I think the, the bigger part of cryptocurrency, and at least the part where I get it, is this fear of missing out, right? And it's not so much about what cryptocurrency is. It's about, you know, a feeling of a missed opportunity. And I think that's really powerful. And I mean, again, unless people have a lot of very specific questions on exactly how cryptocurrency works and like interrupt us, I'm kind of thinking it's really to me more about FOMO, this, this fear of missing out, knowing that if you had had the hindsight to buy a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, you know, 10 years ago, you would have an ungodly amount of money right now. Right. And I think, and and then it gets worse when you see, oh, well, a year ago it was at 10,000, now it's at 50, right? If I had put 100,000 in it, I'd have 500,000 right now. Well, it's gonna keep going up, right? And, 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 and I think that's really a lot of where it's coming from. Um, I, I, it, it, the answer is anybody who says they know is lying, right? <laughs> I mean, Nobody really knows. I, I can say as a general rule that by the time everybody's talking about something, it's probably too late. Oh, okay. Um, and that's not always exact, but by the time like, and again, as a like financial person, I'm, you know, I'm getting more, you know, the time I seem to get more people interested in, uh, in you know bitcoin right then seems to go down a bit after that and i think it's interesting too because you know there's there's a lot of there there's also a lot of scamming around it right, right. Because, well see this is why i think yeah. can you like just in a really okay. short easy way like yep. pretend five kind of way yep. can you just explain what cryptocurrency is because i don't know part of my fear of missing out is that i don't know what i'm missing out on I think. Um, so, I, I. By the way, I have a good way to explain it, but I'm just reading and I'm just looking up just another explain it like I'm five just to make sure because if somebody else might have done it somewhat better, so right, although I could course. probably do it, I, I might take that and translate it. So just hold on a second while yeah, absolutely. I, I I do that. Um, but what? So what? What are the so what happens is, in the simplest terms, is that somebody has a computer that or, or that solves problems, mm -hmm. and as it gets rewarded for solving the problems okay. with a value. So okay. if you think about a more government computer, right, or like a powerful computer. Right. The more problems it can solve, mm -hmm. the more you're rewarded for finding the coins, right? That's right. why they call it mining, right? Okay. Because it's like you're digging for gold, essentially, right? So what happens is you're, you're solving all these problems until you basically discover a coin, right? Okay. Now, what happens is there's lots of other different types of coins and other people have made different types of ones. Most people can't mine Bitcoin itself anymore because there's so many people who've got into it. Okay. Think of it this way. If you're mining for gold and the more valuable gold gets and the less of it there is, mm -hmm. the harder it is to mine it. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's a simple of how it's created, if okay. that makes sense. So yeah. somebody creates this, you know, platform where 
computers solve problems and you know the more com the more and faster you solve the problem the more you're rewarded with the coins um that's how they mostly all work and things go up this is why essentially everything goes up is there's more people buying it than selling it at the end of the day, that's all that matters. That's the reason stocks go up. That's the reason everything goes up. There's more people buying than selling. It's that simple. The part that's interesting about cryptocurrency is that it's very unregulated too. Mm. Um, there's some parts of it where the tech, there's a few interesting parts. And stop me if I'm trying to get too technical. Mm -hmm. But so that's the money. That's how it's made. That's why it's called mining. Anyone can make their own currency and come up with their own way to, you know, mine it and create the own problems to solve to then mm -hmm. be rewarded. Bitcoin was just one of the first. So okay. there's, you know, Ethereum and, and Litecoin and some that were made up just to be funny that keep going up like Doggy Coin, mm -hmm. right? What uh, the heck is Doggy Coin? I'm sorry, I never heard of that. The it was kind of made to be a joke as far as I remember. And then people have just kept buying it. I think because a lot of that fear of missing out too, right? You see <laughs> that if you had spent a thousand dollars on this two months ago, you'd have 10,000 now, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, so So that's, that's where people want to um, buy in. And, and that's where I, I, you can find a lot of, and even me, a lot of anxiety and worry, like, man, if I had just done this, I would have this and my life would be like this. Well, maybe it's not too late. You know, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, well, it's going to keep going up. It's going to keep going up. And, and sometimes that can happen, right? But generally speaking, by the time everybody's talking about something, it's too late. Mm -hmm. And the other part too, is there's a lot of scams around cryptocurrency because it there are parts of it that are legitimate that are very interesting. So there's the technology that it's based on, and mm. then there's Bitcoin as a currency. So there's this technology called blockchain, okay. which is a very interesting way to um, to distribute information and data. Basically, with Bitcoin. Everybody can see when a Bitcoin was mined, how much Bitcoin was sent. There's basically a, a ledger of everything that's happening. Okay. Now, but it's anonymous. You don't know <laughs> who sent what. It's it's a random, the address is, you know, completely random and untraceable, like a random email address, mm -hmm. but it's all there for everyone to see. So... There's two, so that's the blockchain technology is unrelated to the cryptocurrency itself. Like imagine a, a supply chain being able to keep track of everything along the process and all the transactions a lot better. Mm -hmm. And it's decentralized, right? Nobody can stop it, basically. Mm -hmm. um, you can send money with it. Um, you can buy it. It's not hard to buy. Um, if somebody makes something sound really, really easy, it's almost certainly a scam because right. if it was that easy, they wouldn't need you. They'd just be doing it. So, so buying it like buying stocks, is it like that kind of thing? Like you're buying it because it's going to go up in value? Well, I think that's why a lot of people are buying it. Yes. Okay. Um, there's people who can mine Bitcoin or something equivalent, right? But that takes a lot of special computer power, mm. lots of time, and it a lot of energy, a lot of power in the electric bill. I actually did it for several months a couple of years ago. I had uh, I had like 20 graphics cards in my basement, you know, <laughs> mining. Um, I, I think I broke even on the computer hardware and stuff that I bought, like minus like the coins that I got. For mm -hmm. me, it was about the learning experience mm -hmm. because I wanted to, if I'm going to talk about something, I wanted to really understand it. And mm -hmm. so the way to really understand it is how it was 
made. Right. And figure, you know, that out. Um, so one of the, so, so there, so that's where I think it gets a little interesting. There's the part of a technology of having currency and money that's separate. Mm -hmm. um, obviously that can be used for illicit things, right? If criminals mm -hmm. can send money untraceable and, right. you know, directly. See, because that's what I remember. That's the first yeah. thing I remember hearing about it. Was yeah. that it was being used to do things illegally. <laughs> and that's yeah. what I was like, oh, well, why would I want to do anything with that? I don't even understand it. And so and that was my first understanding of Bitcoin is that that's what it was used for, or cryptocurrency. It's very dark web attached in my head. Yeah. No, and it is. It, and there were, there was spyware computers that would like hack into your web browser and start using your computer processing power to, you know, send, you know, coins back. At the moment, it seems to be just Bitcoin has gone up so much mm -hmm. that you're hearing about it and getting a lot of people asking because, you know, hey, if you had bought Bitcoin a few years ago, right? Or even a month ago, a couple months, a year ago, Bitcoin was at 10,000, right? So, you know, you're probably feeling like you, you missed out on an opportunity. Um, so I, I do find, and I don't know like the exact reason like why, but a lot of times Bitcoin seems to spike like in the end of the year the beginning mm. of the year that happened last time when it really went from like five to 20 and then back down for a while again that happened around like the winter time around mm. the same I, I don't know if that will repeat itself this year uh yes uh michelle oh um when you were talking about like being used illegally. So could it like possibly be used for money laundering? And I don't really exactly understand what money laundering is and how it works, but it's just something I've heard. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, it depends on the definition of money laundering, but yes, cause I mean, you, the, the idea of Bitcoin is it's essentially, untra it's untraceable, but traceable at the same time. So you can see transactions that were made basically anonymous email addresses and mm -hmm. who sent money where and that money was sent that can be confirmed but beyond that you have no idea who has access to that again we'll call it address so if i was this if i was to make a bitcoin address and i was to send money to somebody else's bitcoin address you know there's I mean, I, I'm sure they're they're getting better, but in general, there isn't a good way to monitor that and to keep track of that. So it, that that's where it could be used for, you know. Um, and then if you take it out, you take it out in the bank. I'm sure the government is, you know, pretty good at wanting to, you know, keep track of some of it. But there have been cases in the past where, again, it, it's hard for them if you're not using a bank account, right? Money laundering would be, how do you get the Bitcoin from Bitcoin to cash, right? Or how do you get it? And I mean, the more things you can buy with Bitcoin, the better. Um, I'm sure there's some ways to do it, but if I was to, you know, for example, I mine Bitcoin in my basement and I send it to somebody, I mean, there's no way for anyone to know, right? Mm -hmm. So, but I, the mining is really hard and really complicated. There was a time where it was a little bit easier, but now, so basically, cause you're solving specific mathematical problems, different types of computers are better at different types of problems. So different types of, computer components are better for Bitcoin or Ethereum or uh, one of those. And I guess what I'm seeing is it's, it's almost like this, you know, man, anybody can make it, right? Anybody can like get a computer, can start quote mining Bitcoin. It's like, like a gold rush, like looking for gold, literally, right? Um, 
That's why I've seen a lot of interest. And then that's hidden around the fact that there's this cool technology behind it, right? There's, there's the coins and then there's the cryptocurrency and then there's the, the blockchain technology, the basis for how they're doing it. And those things are completely separate. You can build software on blockchain technology and that doesn't matter what the price of Bitcoin's doing, but it seems to hype it up a lot. Um, I had, I knew somebody who got talked into a, you know, basically a scam. Like we have this trading al algorithm, you know, you give us the money and we're going to generate you 20%, you know, a day in Bitcoin returns, anything like that. Stay away from scam. How do you use your Bitcoin? How do you like cash it in or use it to buy anything? I mean, do people, do people accept Bitcoin and who, who and where do they accept it? So there are some places that accept Bitcoin. Actually, in, in a funny way, Bitcoin actually has a fair amount of what's called, you know, like transaction fees. Mm -hmm. So you think about like with a credit card, you have to, um, so, so yeah, so with a credit card, the store per you know the store pays visa or mastercard right when you buy something you know they pay a transaction fee so what happens is with bitcoin is uh essentially the people who are mine who are mining bitcoin or sometimes already own bitcoin and again a lot of this is in theory they um i lost my chart so those people are rewarded for basically processing the transaction, kind of like Visa, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So you can buy it. Um, a lot of times there can be more fees to buy it. So, or to transfer money, there, there are some transaction fees. The other hard part is with the price moving so frequently, hey, it's been great, if you put $200 in Bitcoin a year ago and it's $1,000, right? But that can also very much work the other way. So that's also really hard to try and buy something. If anyone wants to buy Bitcoin, um, you know, there's, there are some good sites that'll let you buy and sell a lot Bitcoin and a bunch of the others directly. I, I can paste the link in the chat. Um, and it, you know, if, if you, if you want to buy some, you know, there are, there are worse ideas, right. You know, but just understand that, you know, you don't want to buy it with money that, you know, you're going to need for something. And the other part is once you, uh, if you lose your Bitcoin login, like to get to your email, basically, mm -hmm. Um, you can't get it back. I forget the statistic. There's coin. And so the site's called Coinbase. You link your bank account, you can transfer in money, um, and you can send it. They can, that, that one's been around forever. Uh, you have to verify yourself. Um, but if you want to buy Bitcoin, I would go through them. I think PayPal says you can do it through them now. I think I see that when I log into PayPal, um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I just know Coinbase has uh, been the one. Mm -hmm. So, kind of, is it like a stable investment to make, or you think it's an unstable investment? Uh, so, how about I share the screen? Yay. Okay. Let's see. I don't see anything, Andrew. No, I know. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> what about the, you know, uh, you talk about the cryptocurrency and the blockchain. Uh, how secure it is to do these transactions and what is the difference related to the traditional transactions that I know that's buying shares, but uh, doing the transactions, well, how different it is from 
uh, other ways like the online transaction, the transaction that I do by cell phone mm. or other apps that we do. So we're talking, yeah. So, I mean, first off, you know, as far as a stable investment, there's nothing almost more not stable than Bitcoin, I would think. Really? Wow. Mm. Yeah, I not, mean. Not about, not, not about stable, look. about, so, you know, security, that, that data leaks, for example, my, 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 my data or my information might be leaked and some hacker or cracker might get my information and use it to, uh, you know, negotiate uh, uh, once he says that I am Renato, for example. Well, so the thing about Bitcoin is that it's definitely, um, what was I going to say? I think about it is it, the, the, it's definitely anonymous, right? In the way that it's anonymous, but that really works both ways too. Like if you make a mistake, if you send Bitcoin to someone else, you know, mm -hmm. there's no repercussion either way, right? There again, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, if somebody if somebody sends it to you, for example, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that was particularly helpful or the answer you're looking for. I, I'd say nothing's really safe on the internet. Uh, mm. Bitcoin's pretty anonymous, but that all depends on how anonymous you are yourself, right? Because mm -hmm. if you've asked for donations to your Bitcoin address and you've posted your Bitcoin address one place public before, right? Mm -hmm. That's actually how with back in the dark web, um, mm -hmm. they, it was a few years ago, there was, uh, Oh, uh, what was his name, Becca? He, he uh, from uh, The Princess Bride. He, that was the name of the, oh, the Harry pirate. <laughs> or I can't remember what he named that's himself. Yeah, yeah. And that's what he went by. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, they found him because he was asking on a forum something about Bitcoin somewhere. And even though the Bitcoin itself was not traceable, right? Mm -hmm. He kind of left some breadcrumbs, if that makes sense. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, because, you know, when it, if you go to Coinbase, you're not really completely anonymous because Coinbase is keeping a record. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So, you know, if you wanted to be completely anonymous, right, you do it yourself in the basement and then, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, yeah. send it to someone directly. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think right now it's a lot of people of, I mean, look at this chart. I mean, if you had put, I mean, you're talking about, you know, year, you know, not too long ago, what, one mm -hmm. year, right? right? I mean, you're you're talking about mm -hmm. you'd have a thousand would be five thousand dollars right now. Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's that buy low, sell high. It seems to kind of go against that. But, but how do you get that five thousand dollars if it, if you can't spend it like normal money? Then it's really not. I mean, how is it worth anything? So you could turn it into cash. So like Coinbase. How? So let's say I bought it with Coinbase. I could you can turn it into cash. Is it so, the same dollar for dollar value? There's see the transaction fee at the bottom of my screen here. No. They're saying Where oh there we go. Out? So they're saying like a credit card processing fee. No, we can't see it. It's too oh, big. Oh, you can't? Sorry. So th th there's a well, processing fee. Okay. Sort of like when you cash in your investments, you have- Right. That's how I have. But, it, but it's a little higher, right? Yeah. You know, because if you think about even like buying physical gold or things like that, there's just more to process. So, and it can take a while to verify because remember that it's all decentralized. So when we thought about buying something with Bitcoin, I equated it to like Visa, right? right? Well, the issue is that everyone is Visa. So it needs to get verified essentially through everyone. So mm -hmm. there were times I remember where, you know, a Bitcoin transaction would take a couple hours to verify. 
that's not something that you can use in the grocery store, right? Mm -hmm. If you're trying to verify the transaction. So that's actually also one of the reason we've seen a lot of other coins come out is to actually be more usable, to actually be able to be used as a cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. um, and just like the Euro or the US dollar, you know, you can change, right? Bitcoin for the others mm -hmm. at, at a place like uh, Coinbase that I, I pasted a link to. Does Bitcoin not have an exchange rate from country to country? It's all the same value? Well, it's it's in U.S. dollars. So oh, it is. In US dollars. Okay. okay. Or it's based in U.S. dollars. Most things are. So okay. one Bitcoin is so many U.S. dollars. So that would also depend a little bit on that. Okay. It's <laughs> yeah. It, I, I'm nervous because you know it, it's. You know, yes, yes, you could make a lot of money, but it, you shouldn't put anything in Bitcoin that you're not um, okay with losing. Right. Either. You know, you should be anything that you put in cryptocurrency, you should be able to be able to live without mm -hmm. if you didn't have. That's not saying mm -hmm. you're not going to make money. Hopefully you do. But if you do it, that's great. Um, I would stay away from anything you know, nobody has a secret trading algorithm to make lots of money and, and do this or do that, you know, but if you wanted to buy some, you know, to see how it, you know, works, then I don't think that's a, a bad idea. Just, you know, think of it like going to the casino, right? Be prepared oh, okay. to lose all of it. Mm -hmm. um, hey, if you don't, that's great. Awesome. But there's no such, you know, if, if I knew that I was going to, you know, five times my money in a year, mm -hmm. I'd have a lot more money. So would everyone else, right? Can't be that easy. <laughs> Is there a minimum amount you can purchase? Like, like if I wanted to buy something, do I have to, like, like, you know, like when you go to get a CD, it's like you have to put in like 1500 in order to get that CD rate. You can't, you can't do it for less than that amount. Is that the way it is with like Bitcoin too? I mean, I, you could buy it for like a hundred dollars but there might be like a couple of dollar transaction fee regardless. So okay. it probably makes sense to, you know buy a little bit. I mean, I, I, I bought like a hundred dollars here and there actually. And I actually think I still have a fair amount of Ethereum from a few years ago when I was mining it. Which also speaks about another story is if you lose that address that's encrypted, <laughs> you lose that address. I, I forget the amount of money that they estimate is lost with Bitcoin. Well, that's what I was thinking about, right? So it has to, because there must be a certain amount of loss, there has, it has to change its value by how much gets lost, right? Well, no, well you don't know how much is lost, right? So because, uh, so, but no, there's how much is mined. So okay. eventually you won't be able to mine Bitcoin anymore. Mm -hmm. All of it will be discovered. Mm -hmm. um, so, and um, so, but what's interesting is um, if you have, you know, it on a computer, it's more secure, right? Nobody can hack you or steal your Bitcoin if it's off the grid, right? Mm -hmm. Well, then you can lose that. And if you lose that, you're done. Right. I actually have something in my basement with, oh, crap. I actually think it's a decent amount of money now. Uh, Ethereum, right? Because I forgot about it, right? You know, and I had like three or four from when I was mining and I haven't touched it. There's a chance I may not be able to get back into it, right? Um, let's hope I saved my backup. Right. I, but that's why think of it this way. That's like the different Coinbase is like going to a bank. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having it physically is like keeping cash. It's like putting it in your mattress. Right. Yeah, exactly. Except well, you're not going to lose that. <laughs> no, no. But if you, you have uh, to pay a, a, a surrender fee to get it out of your mattress. Right? Well, I, I, I heard a story of someone do that like. I think I read online that like 
he had the encryption key on like an old floppy disk or something. And like he threw away the floppy, he's going through his stuff and threw away the floppy disk and like he didn't label it or something. And like there was like millions, of, like there was like all like thousands of dollars that he couldn't wow. access because he didn't have the, the encryption code. Mm -hmm. And then he was thought about like he thought about like going down the dumpster and going through the like going down to like the, the like the garbage landfill, like and like looking through the landfill and he right. just like yeah, well, if the floppy disk is exposed think, to the elements, it's not going to work anyhow. That's yeah, really I don't remember if he found some other way to do it, but I don't remember. But he was, like, kicking himself. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm so bad at even remembering passwords, so I think that, that I won't be bothering with Bitcoin because I, I can't even type in my password correctly. I transpose it and everything, so it's... <laughs> well, even, like, <laughs> sure. Bitcoin Money is, I've like, bought, thousands never... of dollars. It's right. like... I, I mean, I... Like Sorry, somebody How asked about to diversify. Would you mm -hmm. recommend investing a small percentage in Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation? I, I, I you know. Alexa, how much is one Bitcoin? It's about one, $52,000. One Alexa's saying one Bitcoin is $52,000 and yeah. $52,280. Uh -huh. <laughs> so what, what I would say is as a hedge against inflation, almost anything other than cash is a hedge against inflation. Stocks mm -hmm. are a hedge against inflation. Um, if you wanted to take 1% of your money and put it in Bitcoin, go for it, right? I would just don't, you know, don't try to be greedy. Don't try to, you know, anything you put in, it should be like, if I go to the casino, I'm walking in with, okay, I'm going to have fun. If I lose this, you know, it'll be okay. You, you mm -hmm. need to have that mindset other than the anxiety is, is real. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. And it's like, also <laughs> the other interesting part is why is Bitcoin going up? Like, what is its value if right. it didn't exist? There's also the part that it's very, very bad for the environment because of all the electricity that all it right. takes to generate it, it's horrible for the environment um, and, and the pollution that cryptocurrencies have caused by mining is so much. But that's the interesting part, right? Is Bitcoin was kind of one of the first, but it's not even a very good one <laughs> for buying things, right? That that's why other ones came about. If it takes so long to verify a transaction, for example, right? It's never going to be able to be used in a store. Um, but it seems to kind of be the base cryptocurrency. And I, I think that's it. I think it's it's a little bit different, a little bit anonymous. People are talking about it, people don't really understand it. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you put money into it a long time ago, you'd have a lot more money now. So right. those are all kind of things that. It's so, and can I ask this it's a random question that I don't even know if you'll have the answer to, but where do the um, problems come from? Where do all the math equations come from that need to be solved? <laughs> so my understanding is, so when, when they make the coin, okay. they design the algorithm and the way the problems will be solved. Okay. So those are all set from the beginning. Okay. So, um, so that's why, you know, um, you know, like Ethereum has a different way of problem solving, right. Mm -hmm. Than Bitcoin does. So we know how long it's gonna take, you know, or, um, so there's specific, just again, computer parts that are better at solving that type of mathematical right. problem than others. So it, it, it's from when it's initially designed and mm -hmm. there can never be more, right? So from the moment like a Bitcoin is launched or like a new version of Bitcoin, mm -hmm. there are so many Bitcoins that can ever be had that they'll be discovered, right? There's only so many problems that can be part of Right. the algorithm so and one other slightly interesting or i think it's interesting when it comes to the mining is so it's it's random supposedly it's what you know you keep going and if you solve the problem you got one bitcoin right right 
Well, the issue is that it's so hard to solve the problem that you could be mining for two years and never find one. Mm, Wow. So what I did, and I did this personally, was I, you join basically a group of others. Mm -hmm. So if one person discovers it, they, they split it equally. So that Mm -hmm. way you were kind of at least consistently even evening it out Mm -hmm. versus, you know, doing it forever and never find, you know, yeah, exactly. So, but, and, and that's, and that's pretty common. So that's how you end up with, you know, from mining, you'd end up with fractions because, okay, the group discovered one, you contributed this much to the group. Mm-hmm. Here's your portion of it. Wow. So interesting to me. Like I just, now my brain only wants to know like who thought of this and whose idea was this and why did you want to invent mystery coins? It just feels like a, like a video game designer decided to do money is how it feels to me. Yeah, and I, you know, a lot of the ideas back to just a libertarian, you know, there's this decentralization of money. You know, the cool part is nobody owns it, right? So, and it's all verified by everyone. Right. So again, when you process a transaction, you can see the history of what address sent everything to everyone. Right. And it's, it's very cool in a lot of aspects, but I don't think that's the reason most people are interested. Well, of course not. (laughs) Everyone wants to make money is what it all comes down to. But I just think it's so like, to me, somebody had to sit around and be like, Hey, I'm going to make up a money. I don't like this money that we have. And I'm going to make up a money is how it feels, which is we made up money to begin with, I guess. So why not? But I don't know. There's something about it. The real genius is in whoever, whoever thought about, you know, getting all these intelligent mathematical minds to basically work for slave labor, because, you know, they're all spending their hours and time and talent to solve these problems, but not getting paid for anything until they actually come to a, you know, a, a, a definitive conclusion that can be, you know, like prove that they got the, they got the problem solved. And, you know, it, it, they're problems that like mathematical problems that have been taking, you know, centuries for people to try to figure out. And, you know, they've got a bunch of these minds working on it for, for no compens, you know, no guaranteed compensation. Right. Yeah. I think the amount of harm they've done some things on the amount of harm that we've done to the environment for for literally nothing though right right? i mean i'm not saying it's not a cool technology but at the end of the day there's nothing to show for it at bitcoin didn't if you you know it didn't exist right like the world would, would the world be different right or or for example if there was something like bitcoin but you didn't need to mine it right Um, but that was also the idea to make it decentralized, right? Is that in theory, anyone could mine it, but then of course you well, have no, to... only smart mathematical people can mine it. Well, because... no, a computer does it, but you have oh, to, a computer? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that you still have to program the computer. Right. How you to do know, it. So you gotta have some amount yeah. of talent. Yeah. And you have to have enough money to buy the computer equipment and that kind oh, of, oh yeah. Yeah, um, I have to guess that people eventually like paid other people to sit in mine for them and all of that kind of stuff, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> and and that's why you have a lot of the mining's done with graphics cards, not normal computers. The graphics cards are better at solving a lot of the problems. So mm-hmm. you have computer gamers can't buy graphics cards right now, right? Because wow. they're all being bought by people, you know, mm-hmm. to mine to mine them. Yeah. Wow. See, and then it'll just, it'll put, see, I think it'll just put its fire out. Like it'll put itself out. It's just burning too fast. You know what I mean? It got too popular too fast and it doesn't really, nobody understands it. If you ask people that even do it, they can't explain it to you. So it's really yeah. like, I don't know. I, I think if you want to know, I think you should just, you know, buy it the simple way, buy a little, if you can say you own it, be prepared with anything to lose. You know, for me, I I wanted to learn how it worked. I I don't really didn't, I wasn't looking to make money off mining or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to understand how it worked. 
mm-hmm. and it, you know, and how to do it. So yeah. and it was fun, but it was a lot of time. It was a That's lot of I time. Imagine, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So, but I like computers and I like money, so that makes sense, right? <laughs> those, are like, time, those are like right? two of my favorite things, right? Yeah. Um, so you know, like, oh, okay, but you know, I think. There, there's the reason, yeah, again, the reason why. I, I think it's interesting to play around with, but I think if you're looking to get, ri- get rich quick, you're, you know, a fool and his money are easily parted, something yeah. like that, so. Well, I thank you so much for all of your information. I don't know about you guys, but I feel informed now. I feel like at least if I had to have a conversation about it, I could at least have a conversation about it now. Um, And I also know that I want nothing to do with it. And that's fine. (laughs) It's too scary and based on nothing. And my philosophical brain can't grasp that. So um, I don't know if anybody else has any questions. I know you could definitely reach out to us, comment wherever you're seeing the video, um, if you have any other input or experiences to share. Um, But I thank you so much, Andrew, because I feel like I could ask all the stupid questions. And I will now go and Google the crap out of it to know who the guy was who first sat at his computer and said, I'm going to make up some math equations. And you're- Yeah, apparently that guy has a nickname. Uh, Last I checked his- nobody truly knows who he is wow even more um, exciting <laughs> what it's even yeah. more exciting to do that research that <laughs> yeah yeah i haven't looked into the story yet recently but but that's yeah so awesome well thank you guys so much for spending some time with us today i think that's about it for cryptocurrency um and any kind of thoughts on that but feel free to reach out to us anytime and ask i have a quick you. question for you guys oh, yeah. I'm sorry, but I had to leave briefly for a few minutes. What are you guys talking about as far as a cryptocurrency five years ago? Because I missed, I, I caught the first part of what you said about Bitcoin. It was a lot less expensive five years ago. Hmm. You could okay. buy, buy it for less five years ago, and now it's gone up in value. So that's what we were talking about. But not stable value, not value based on anything I can understand. And so therefore, not for me, but maybe for you, don't know. Um, for- but can value drop the way the stock market drops, Andrew? Oh, very much so, absolutely. Really? What would what would cause it to drop? What would be the precipitating factors? More people selling than buying. Oh, okay. Yeah, it just I I mean that that's it. So you know you get a lot of people wanting or to buy computers. <laughs> well, yeah, they come know. out. <laughs> So. Actually, I'm curious, Andrew. I'm sure you guys have heard about the great stock market crash in 1929. Well, I'm curious about Andrews. Do you or anyone else know the specifics as to why that happened then, aside from the fact that everyone was buying stocks at the time? I mean, as Titanic had something to do with it, didn't it? Really? Um, I, as a general rule, it happens when there's there, there's a bubble, right? Bubbles happen all the time. You know, there's, um, I mean, they've gone back to as far as there's something called tulip mania, where tulip bulbs oh. were like as much as a, um, you know, a worker would make in a year is what a tulip bulb was selling for. Wow. And, and this and is, you can have a, a, a squirrel come and eat that and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, the ups and downs of a bubble have just been around forever, right? Like whatever the mechanism, right? Yeah, there, 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 was, was, there was a Portuguese sailor that ate one of the uh, tulips and that's when the whole tulip thing collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> so, I thought tulips were poisonous for humans. The sailor didn't know that? No. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't I do know think that there was somebody on the Titanic who was like a big, you know, m- like money mogul of something. I can't remember what. And when the Titanic sank, he went down with it. And and that precipitated like the stock market crash because all his like money or something sank. It, with the t- if that's true, and then it was probably a smaller portion. I, I, I'm not sure. So that that I, I don't know. The answer to what I can say, man, that guy was sunk. What? That guy was sunk. Yeah, he was. (laughs) (laughs) 
so was the stock market afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went down with the ship. The what else do you crash. expect? Maybe that's yeah. something we, we could talk about another time, though, because I would like to. Another thing I'd like to pick your brain about sometime is all the thing that just happened on Reddit with all the stock buying. Yeah, yeah no, I, I think that could even be next time. I, I know it's mm-hmm. cryptocurrencies, but in a lot of ways, it's really similar, right? Right. That's what I mean. It has the same vibe to it. it. It's the same vibe, right? I mean, that one was a little bit quicker, right? right. And, you know, a little bit different, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, their bubbles are as old as, you know, humans have kind of been around. And, and it's like the real estate happen. bubbles. Yeah, same thing, right? It's all yeah. cryptic it to, to me. A point and then it pops. And that's Tech all bubble, happened. real estate bubble, right? We bought this house right before the bubble burst. And, and within one year, we lost $100,000 value on this house. Yeah, wow. We hadn't intended to stay here this long. We just wanted to get our kids through the, the public school system. And then we wanted to to move but it's like we would lose our shirts if we moved now mm-hmm. well now because of covid everyone's leaving the cities and coming out here in the boondocks maybe you know maybe the we we may have regained our our value but it's like i don't want to sell it now and then end up having to live in a more congested area it's like i, I want my safety here too <laughs> so I was rude. We, uh, I mean rough yeah good we, i was gonna say we uh, did the reverse of that we bought our house just before the prices went up, I was tra- mm. I was tracking the interest rates and the price of houses, and I got it just at the dip, right at the you know what? bottom. I I'm impressed about how much this house is now worth. Right. I mean, that's the way it is. And so that's why I guess we're all thinking about those things, because it's important to remember that we can also not just save money, but we can invest money and where we think about investing is important. Right. So I would love for that to be the topic for next month. I would like to talk a little bit about that and how stocks and stuff work, too, because I think that'd be interesting. Um, I have a question. Um, I'm looking at the details, the description of this event, Mm -hmm. and I am a parent of a 26-year-old daughter, and I was hoping this was going to be telling me not about a particular something stock or these bike coins. It was going to be letting us know, you know, um, how to make these financial decisions, um, you know, setting uh, long-term financial goals. Um, I I didn't hear any of this. No, that's not the intention of this. Well, that's, well, some, sometimes that is things that we have spoken about, right? If that's questions people have and depending on, you know, sometimes we have a theme or so this was people asked us questions about something to talk about. So, so that's what we spoke about, but we have spoken about things like that before Becca, it all depends on what people are coming in, you know, asking for. So if your daughter wants to, you know, come in and, you know, ask a question on anything, we'll, we'll answer it. I think I understand, Linda, your confusion, because I believe that, um, wasn't this originally sponsored by Planning Across the Spectrum? I mean, I mean, I I work for them, but yeah. So So, I think that's how she made that connection and that got confused about the purpose. Well, you can definitely reach out to Andrew and to Planning Across the Spectrum, um, particularly for your situation. They can help you with all of that stuff. Um, that's exactly what a financial advisor is for. And that we did talk about why we need a financial advisor, what you use them for that kind of thing. Um, and, but we do try to do a topic each meeting that we have related to money. Um, and so this was a, a viewer suggestion was cryptocurrency. And so we ran with it. Um, yeah. So yeah, holiday time, we did Christmas budgeting, right? New year's resolution psycho. So yeah, it depends, but different every time keeps it fun one of i'm curious about as far as topics go is that the one of the reasons i'm sometimes a little bit hesitant to give financial advisor and i'm not talking about you guys you guys sound legit it's just when it comes to stock brokers or people like that who are in charge of things like bitcoin i feel a little bit nervous about trusting them blind because i worry that they're only out to get your money and they don't really care about you what i'm curious about is to hear yeah. topics and how to spot those scammers versus legit financial advisors. So that's a great idea. Why don't you do me a favor, Krista? I don't remember things when I hear it auditorily. So if you could send me an email 
with your topic suggestion, because that's a great one. Let's talk about what makes, like if you hire a financial advisor, how do you find a good one? What makes mm -hmm. a good one? How do we like get around all that stuff? Because there are people out there who will try to take advantage, right? And we need to learn how to pick those people better. So I think oh, that's yeah. And maybe and not Ted, even... your financial advisor makes money whether you do or not because hmm. they get paid transaction fees. Not so you... all of them do. So that actually oh. is also another thing to talk about. But I don't I think we shouldn't just talk about financial advisors. Again, we can, but I think we should talk about in general people right. and getting the taken advantage of. To, right? Yeah, the in general to money. For our banking problems and our yeah. Right. And or if you want to invest, who do you ask about that? How do you know when someone is qualified to answer you? And and what are some of those clues? Because I'm actually been talking about how difficult it is for those of us on the spectrum to kind of recognize those toxic type people in our lives. Right. We miss that mm -hmm. and we miss it in this way, yeah. too. When we're looking to hire professionals to help us. Right. Yeah. But aren't there um, like um, like professional boards of standards and stuff? For, for yeah. financial advisors. So as with everything, Michelle, or... those exist in theory, right? <laughs> Lots of people still belong to those organizations and aren't necessarily great people, right? They don't That's necessarily true. get caught. There, and there, there's right. lots of therapists, doctors, and lawyers who are, you know, right. part of that too. So th there's a lot more to it, right? So... Mm -hmm. So I think it would be a great topic. But so those, uh, those yeah. are two really good topics, you guys. Yeah. Um, so we'll is put there, them on the list. And again, if you have any suggestions for topics, or there are things related to money that you're confused about or you're struggling with, um, you want suggestions for, um, please feel free to email myself. I put my email in the chat, or you can reach out to us via our websites and such. Um, but we did do this meetup for you guys. So it has to be the stuff that you want to talk about um, and the stuff you want to know about, you know? Is there so, a way to let you know ahead of time what you're going to be discussing? Because, you know, like I said, happening now, two autistics talk money, making it, spending it, and saving it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that yep. was the title. That's what we talk about. And we meet <laughs> once a month, right? And every month, the topic is different. Something related to making money, saving money, or spending money. Okay. Well, I didn't know it was a monthly thing. And, um, and like I said, I was kind of taken off guard with what was being said and there's no way that you can check in somewhere to find you're out welcome to follow either mine or andrea's social media both of us post regularly okay and once the topic is decided we usually announce it maybe the day before or two days before or even more okay. yeah depending like if we're having a guest or something we've announced it more okay yeah all right and you can also post and the, you can also uh, make a suggestion through their social media of what you'd like to have discussed. Yeah, that that's why we do it. So okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your February. I will see you in March. Oh my God, it's gonna be March already, and then we're gonna oh. be in April and Don't it's gonna push be a month. <laughs> oh my god. It's just March okay. into it. I'm sure you'd agree, <laughs> right, Daniel? We got the March into it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so Bye. much for spending some time. Bye. 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 Yeah.